Hare Krishna. On the auspicious day of Balaram Jayanti, I am going to share with you all some very beautiful stories on Balaram Jayanti. Let us begin with an amazing story about um, a demon named Dhenukasu. One time, Krishna and Balaram, along with all the coward boys, they were playing in the forest of Vrindavan. And while they were playing, they got a scent. The scent was very, very attractive. It was a fragrance coming from a very far away forest. The boys, they followed the fragrance and reached Talavan. Talavan was a forest made up of tal trees. Tal trees are very special trees with a fruit called tala fruit. And these fruits were hanging in hundreds and thousands. Krishna, Balaram and all the friends, they became very attracted to the tala fruit. Friends of Krishna started telling Krishna, Krishna, let us go and eat tal fruits. The problem was, in Talavan, there was a demon named Dhenukasur who had taken charge of the Tala forest. The interesting thing about Talavan was, the fruits were very, very mesmerizing. But at the same time, from, uh, so that forest, that particular section of the forest was taken over by Dhenukasur because Dhenukasur was taking out honey for Kamsa in that forest. And also, they were making some kind of liquor for Kamsa uh, in that forest. And therefore, that entire forest was inaccessible by the Vrajivasis. Though so many tried, everyone was killed by Dhenukasu and no one was allowed to enter that forest of Talavan. Dhenukasur had taken the form of an ass. He was called the ass demon. Dhenu Kasur. Dhenu is uh, referring to an ass. Uh, Dhenu Kasur means a demon but taken the shape of form of an ass. So when uh, Krishna Balaram came to know about this demon and about this particular forest, they said, let us go in. They started going into the uh, Talavan forest and the trees were tall, very, very tall. So now it is impossible for the boys to go and fetch the tall fruits from the trees. So Balaramji, with his powerful strength, he took hold of the tall tree and started shaking it vigorously. When Balaram shook the tall tree so vigorously, tall fruits started falling in hundreds on the ground. The boys started picking up the tala fruits and relishing them and eating them. While the tala fruits were falling from the, from the trees, they were creating a very loud noise. And it um, activated Dhenukasur, who became very concerned by uh, that somebody has come here to rob the tala fruits. He came running along with all his friends the other donkeys. The interesting thing about uh, you know Denugasur and all the other donkeys were there was that you know if you've seen donkeys, they are of a particular standard color. They are three or four colors: brown, you know, black and gray, white, you know, uh, some certain uh, colors in which the, the donkeys are. But these donkeys were very very colorful donkeys. Some of them were yellow. Some of them were brown. Some of them were pink, some of them were green. All sorts of colors, don colorful donkeys were there. I mean, the, the demons could disguise themselves in any form. So they chose any color also. And uh, these colorful donkeys started coming, running towards Krishna and Balaram to kick them and to kill them. The funny thing was, they would come running full speed. And when he would when you would come to Krishna uh, and Balara, you would stop, turn around and kick with his back, with his hind legs. What's the point of running so far? You know, if you're running with such speed, it 
and stopping before kicking. Krishna and Balaram, they started looking at these demons as very stupid creatures. And they realized these demons, these demons have to be really taken care of. So Krishna and Balaram, they got into action. All the boys, they hid behind Krishna and Balaram. Krishna and Balaram began to catch the hind legs of these donkeys. Catching the hind legs of these donkeys, they started rotating the donkeys in the air. And they flung them at great speed. The donkeys then flying all the way up the tall trees. And they fell on the topmost branch of the tall trees. And they were hanging over them. So one by one, Dhenukasur was sent first. And then all his associates, they started coming. So Balaram caught Dhenukasur, rotated him and threw him right on top of the first tree. Then all the other uh, donkeys of uh, Devukasur, they got very angry that their master has been killed. They began to come and in the same way run very fast towards Krishna and Balaram and turn around and try to pick them. And Krishna and Balaram would catch their leg and stole them and throw them on top of the trees. Very soon, all the demons were hanging on the trees. Imagine a canopy of all colorful donkeys on top of every tree and like this it almost looked like a rainbow you know formed on top of the trees the killing of dhenukasur teaches us many lessons one of the practical lessons is so balaram is the original spiritual master guru and he teaches us some very beautiful lessons our heart is compared to the Tala forest, the Talavan forest. And our heart is a very beautiful place. Talavan forest is a very beautiful place. But the, uh, the, the forest of Talavan was meant for Krishna to perform his pastimes. It was meant for Krishna to come and enjoy those fruits. But the, uh, what are those fruits? So if you imagine our forest is like a Talavan forest and the Talavan forest has a lot of trees filled with Tal fruits. Those fruits are compared to our propensity to love, to love and serve God. But currently our hearts are filled with many Dhenukasur and his associates. So now the propensity to love, which is meant for offering the fruits of service to Krishna, Unfortunately, day after day, Denudasu is taking those fruits and offering them to Kamsa. So, which means uh, the fruits that are meant for Krishna's satisfaction are being devoured by Denudasu of lust, envy, anger, pride, illusion, which are sitting in our hearts. So, now uh, naturally, we are becoming more and more selfish, more and more egoistic. And more and more uh, bad. And we are not allowing Krishna and his devotees to perform pastimes within the Talavan forest, within our hearts. And uh, naturally, the result of Hedukasur occupying our heart is that Krishna and Balaram does not get, get to enter our hearts. If Krishna and Balaram are not going to enter our hearts, and Hedukasur, like demons, are going to stay in our hearts. How will we experience taste and chanting the holy names? And therefore, when we are chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the holy name doesn't stay within our hearts. Because there is no scope for uh, the holy name to stay within our hearts. And therefore, Balaramji, who is the spiritual master, the Guru, he, uh, he enters our hearts forcefully. And the first thing uh, Balaramji does is that he shakes up the Tala trees, uh, which means he instigates Denugasu. He instigates Denugasu. When we take shelter of the, inst of the instructions of the spiritual master, when we take shelter of the instructions of the Guru, what happens is that lust, anger, pride, envy, you know, the jealousy, all of these get shaken up and they get destroyed by the mercy of the spiritual master. Only by the grace of the spiritual master 
then we get rid of demonic contaminations within our hearts. And when our hearts become pure, then Krishna and all his friends can come and play around in our hearts. And therefore, our hearts become another, a very beautiful place in which Krishna Balaram can play. So, our hearts are like a uh, Talavan forest. Renuka Sur and all his associates have come and occupied our hearts. And then we invite Balaram, please come and purify our hearts, get rid of all these demons. Balaram comes, twirls the Renuka demon and throw, throws them in the air and kills all the Renuka demons. And then that place, the Thala forest becomes free for Krishna and his friends to come and play. The second lesson that we learn from the story is that Renuka Sur was an ass. The, the nature of, a, of an ass is that the ass is a um, beast of burden. As long as we are in this material conception of life, we are carrying a heavy burden in our, on our backs. What is the burden that we are carrying? The burden of sins of so many lifetimes we are carrying. And as a result of carrying such heavy burden of so many lifetimes of sin on our backs, like these donkeys, we are struggling the consequences of our karma. And also just like donkeys, people all over the world are struggling so heavily in this material existence. They have so much, but they still work so hard out of greed uh, and uh, just to maintain or increase what we have. And so much effort is being created uh, in this kingdom of Denugasu. And in the Sur kingdom, ego is the center. And therefore, Renuka Sur is foolishly trying to enjoy and uh, at the same time working very hard to uh, gather fruits to enjoy. And at that point in time, when we are in this, uh, you know, in a situation like these uh, donkeys, we come to the shelter of the spiritual master, Guru, Brother Ramji. And Balaramji, out of his kindness, he helps us understand, don't carry these heavy burdens of sins on your back. Drop them and take shelter of Krishna. Balaramji, using philosophy, using so many ways, he tries to explain to us that it is not worth carrying such a heavy burden on our backs. And it is important. Just, just drop those burdens and focus on the path of Krishna consciousness. It is explained that someone who has a lot of sins inside him, he cannot raise his hands and chant the holy names, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. You, know, you go to temples, you go to satsang programs, uh, you, and when we do the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, we usually raise our hands like this. And the raising of the hands indicates that uh, our body and our minds, our being is free from sin is very light and if you are very light you can easily raise your hands up but if you are very heavily burdened by sins your hand will not raise very easily you will find a lot of people struggling just to raise their hands so that's the burden of sin that is not allowing them to be free and raise their hands therefore if you take shelter of Balaramji on this very auspicious day he will help us with his strength with his power to drop all our burdens and to remove all the demons that are there in our hearts and make us free and sinless. Uh, I would highly urge all of y'all on this very auspicious day of Balaram Jayanti to chant more rounds, to if possible go to the local temple and attend the evening satsang program and take shelter of Lord Balaram. Balaram is a source of strength. We all need spiritual strength to overcome temptations, to help to get the strength to get up early in the morning to have the strength to chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, to have the strength and determination to read Srila Prabhupada's books on a daily basis, to have the determination to practice spiritual life. We all need a lot of strength. And the person who can give us the strength is Balaramji. So let us on this very auspicious day of Balaram Jayanti, take shelter of Balaramji and request him to give us the strength that we all need. Thank you very much. And a very happy Balaram Jayanti to all of you. Hare Krishna.